If you happen to be a player looking to develop a stronger and faster picking technique, you're no doubt going to run into lots of amazing articles, videos, resources to help you along the way. But one thing that gets overlooked quite a lot is the factor of endurance. So in this video, we're going to take a look at some ways to develop it and get it to work for you along your speed picking journey. Let's check it out. <laughs> Now, some will inevitably think to develop endurance is not just a matter of playing longer. Technically, yes, but I prefer to use a system and a method that maximizes the amount of time that I'm going to spend on it. All you're going to need to do the things suggested in this video are a guitar, a pick, a metronome, and a timer. If you got those, we're good to go. The first method I like to use is one I call the timer gnome. Silly name, but it's really indicative of what's involved here. We have a timer which I generally set to two minutes, sometimes three, depending, and of course, a metronome. The idea is that one of them is gonna be a constant and the other is gonna be a variable. So what I've decided that works great for me is to have the timer be the constant. It's always set to the same amount of time. In this case, two minutes. So that doesn't change. As you play your example, you're gonna start at a reasonable BPM, let's say, good old-fashioned 60 beats per minute. You're gonna play your example, regardless of whether it's eighth notes, eighth note triplets, 16th notes, doesn't really matter. Start slow and reasonable because again, we are playing for two whole minutes. Once you've done a two minute pass, you're gonna rest for a couple of minutes and then you're gonna do it again. But what you're gonna do is bump the metronome up while keeping the timer set to the same thing. So let's say pass number one is gonna be 60 BPM and then after a minute of rest, I'm going to do two minutes at 65, two minutes at 70, two minutes at 75, or whatever increment you, you want to bump up. Now, for this, you can do literally anything at all, anything that's part of a song or a solo or an exercise that you find helpful. Uh, in this case, if you want something as an example here, we could take a short little look like this. which is just an exercise, a little lick. So what I'm doing here is I've got fourth string 11, 12, 14, which is gonna give us C sharp, D, and E. And then I'm gonna skip a string. So the lick I've chosen to play here has several factors that I'm gonna help, or are going to help me get more out of it. So what I'm getting at here is there's gonna be some string skipping. So obviously this is gonna make alternate picking a little harder to do, so this is worth adding to, to the lick. So when I skip a string, I'm gonna to go to the 10th fret on A, and I'm gonna hit A, B, and C sharp at the 14. And I'm gonna come back down to 12, and I'm coming back down to 10. So the first half is that. And then I'm gonna shift. I'm gonna shift the index finger still on the second string to the 12th fret B, and we're gonna sort of play a, a reversal of what we just did. If, if you look at what we just did, we did three notes on one string, and then technically five notes on the next string. So now with our shift to the 12th fret, we're gonna reverse the number order. So we're gonna do five on this string. So that's B, C sharp, D, 12, 14, and 15, and then back down to C sharp, back down to 12. And then the three notes remaining are gonna land on the fourth string. And this is gonna be 16th fret F sharp, 14th fret E, and 12th fret D. And therefore the second half will be that. So all together. That would be the lick. So if you're gonna use that as your guinea pig for this experiment, then by all means do so. What you would do is set your timer to two minutes, set your metronome to 60 beats per minute, and you're gonna launch into two straight minutes of Now I'm not gonna play the entire two minutes because that would be boring, but this is what you do. And then when you get to the end, you rest for a minute, and then you're going to bump up the metronome a little bit, keeping the timer to the same degree of, of time, which again is two minutes. 
So when you have a constant and a variable, you end up with something that is going to be very noticeable. You're, you're going to see results very quickly. Um, it's going to make building endurance a lot more enjoyable because you're going to see progress as you go. And this is a huge factor when it comes to speed building. This is something that the word endurance gets thrown out there in passing. It doesn't really get enough attention. And the fact is, without endurance, you're not going to develop much speed. Well, unfortunately, a lot of players mention the word endurance, but they don't really emphasize it. And honestly, to develop endurance the way we're doing, the number of repetitions you're going to do of this exercise is going to be quite a lot <laughs> and is going to ensure that you also develop speed. So it's not a speed exercise, but it will help you to develop speed. Um, the other method, which is a little less scientific and involves, well, it doesn't involve the timer, uh, I suppose you could use a metronome, is literally just to play until fail. So basically you just play until your wheels fall off and then rest. It works. The reason why I don't like that one as much, it's easy to slip into mindless practice, which is something you always want to avoid. So playing something to fail, you have to still be mentally engaged, and that's an important factor. <laughs>